Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads brings you the charming Sigmund Romberg operetta, My Romance, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Evelyn Case. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another memorable musical is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Edward Sheldon's play, Romance, was one of the great hits of the American theater. And Sigmund Romberg fashioned a memorable musical from this famous love story. And here's My Romance. <laughs> Good evening, Grandfather. Happy New Year. Oh, oh, Harry. Good of you to drop by, my boy. Excuse me, I was just dozing. Well, even Episcopal Bishop should celebrate New Year's Eve, Grandfather. When you're of my age, my boy, you'll find the best way to spend the curve of time called New Year's Eve is to dream a bit about the past and pray a bit about the future. Grandfather, I... Something well, wrong, Harry? I'm in love, Grandfather. And she's the most beautiful girl in the world. How did you know? Well, after all, you're an Armstrong. Yeah, but my folks say I mustn't marry her just because she's an actress. An actress? <clears throat> Sit down, Harry. Would you like to hear a story? What kind of story, sir? Well, you might say it was the story of my romance. It was in 1898. My, that seems a long time ago. Quite a wonderful year, 1898. My soul is it is, Susan. I know, you're uncomfortable. But it's very important for you to meet the right people. Why, everybody says you're the most promising young rector in New York City. <laughs> Aren't you going to include Yonkers? Oh, now be serious, Tom. Why, do you know who the guest of honor is tonight? Madame Cavallini, the great Italian opera star. Now, why would an unknown Episcopal clergyman want to meet a woman like that? There's only one girl I'm interested in. You, Susan. What's our future going to be like, Tom? Well, I know, because it's all written in your palm. It is? You didn't know I was an amateur palmist, did you? Left hand, please. Uh -huh. Just look at the length of that lifeline. Plenty of strength marked in your lifeline. Written in your hand is a very long line. Plenty of love marked in your heart line, written in your hand, I see. The husband will not choose the wrong wife. Honeymoon spent near the water, happy van. Maybe a daughter. Here it's clear is something that fate has planned. Just take a look at your heart line. Look at my heart line. Each a true love and never to part line. Dear. Dearest, your every line is the same as mine. Written down in your heart. Oh, Tom. I'm 
Madame Pavellini is about to sing in the drawing room. Oh, we must hear her. Come along, Tom. Now, you go with the others. I think I'll just get a breath of air right up in the balcony. Oh, you men are all the same. You all think opera is just too stuffy. I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, Susan. Good evening. Oh. Oh, good evening. Are you escaping from the operatic bellowing, too, from what's her name? Uh, Cavallini. Yes, that's it. Well, you might say I was escaping from a, a young man. What are you called? Tom Armstrong. And what do you do with so funny a name? You entertain in the music hall? No, I'm the rector of St. Giles. I didn't know that ministers were so handsome. <laughs> I must go to church more often. You know, I, I, I've never seen a woman like you. Are you falling in love with me? Well, it's rather hasty to say anything like that. Fall in love with me? That's what I live for. <laughs> Laughter and love. Well, that's hardly sentimental. Sentiment is not for me. Once I lived on dreams, sentimental schemes, but I soon discovered I was wrong. Castles in the air need too much repair, so I changed the lyric of my song. No more dreams, no more schemes in the world. time if you treat them well. Look, I press them to my face. Well, you're crushing them. What does it matter? I have kissed them and they are born to die. And I'm meeting here tonight. What is it? But a bunch of violets. No, I don't believe that. Pretend you're in love with me. What would you say? <laughs> I wouldn't know what to say. I have never envied poets in the past. Now I envy Shelley, Keats, and such at last. If you were a poet, wondrous word to find, to express your state of mind. From now onward, you'll be haunting my heart. From now onward, Life is going to stop. I'll hear your voice. No other voice will I hear. I'll have no choice but to be near you. From now on, I'll be sharing your dreams. to say 
convincing words when you're only speaking for a moment and not a lifetime. Oh, Tom, the strangest thing happened. Suddenly, Madame Cavallini disappeared and the concert hasn't even begun. Oh, Madame Cavallini. Uh-huh. Then I'd better not keep the guests waiting. Good evening, Reverend Armstrong. Good evening, Madame Cavallini. Well, how nice, Tom. Have you been getting acquainted with the great opera singer? Um, yes, you might say so, Susan. Is anything wrong, Tom? Hmm? No. Turn in a moment for Act Two of My Romance. To most folks, one stretch of railroad track looks pretty much like another. And in one very important respect, that's true. Because thanks to the fact that all railroad track everywhere in America is exactly four feet eight and one half inches wide, only the American continent has a completely unified rail system. But when you take a closer look, you find that every single rail in America's main track has a complete and individual life history. It was born in a specific place at a specific time. It will work hard all its life and be retired when its working days are over. And a complete diary is kept of that life span. Someday, in fact, as you drive past a stretch of railroad track, you may see it being interviewed by men in railroad detector cars. These railroad research men are working with complex electronic devices to find if there are any internal defects in the rail. If there are, that rail is immediately replaced long before any actual failure can develop. Yes, thorough rail examinations are conducted continually on the world's largest proving ground, the entire 225,000 miles of the nation's main track. And a system has been set up whereby each rail is branded to show the year and month it was made, the mill that produced it, the batch of steel from which it was rolled, the individual steel ingot from which it was made, and even the particular section of the ingot from which it came. Rail removed from this 225,000 miles of main track, for causes other than normal wear, is analyzed, and ways are sought to correct the cause of the flaw. In that way, America's railroads, which spend over $100 million annually for new rail, assure themselves of the highest quality rail obtainable. Rail research, of course, is only a part of the exhaustive, endless search for new ways and means to provide continually more efficient, more economical rail service. And this extensive research program has played a major role in helping the railroads improve every phase of their operation year in and year out, and thus remain the foundation of the nation's essential transportation system. Now, here is act two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Sigmund Romberg's My Romance, starring Gordon McRae as Tom Armstrong and Evelyn Case as Madame Cavallini. What happened, Grandfather? Nothing, my boy, and everything. Quite an impossible situation, don't you think? A young clergyman in love with a fabulous opera star. I think that's wonderful. Well, I walked the streets of New York singing. And do you know, Harry, I can still hear an organ grinder's melody. An Italian street song I learned, designed to sing to your lady love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bella Donna. 
beware, you must beware A fisher made fair with beautiful eyes like Napoli skies Take care, you fellas, take care This maiden will tear your masculine heart in very small parts This maiden will tear your masculine heart in very small parts Belladonna, I dote upon her Belladonna of Napoli When I spend a lira or two upon her Then she's friendly, friendly as she can be Belladonna, do me the honor Belladonna, that is my plea And I know that sure as fate She'll pick me out as her mate So congratulate Belladonna and me Beware, beware You fall and you were spared do I care as long as she's mine? Beware, beware, she'll drive you into despair. Carissimi mine, you cook spaghetti divine. When a woman loves to catch you, you might just as well give in. It's her dearest wish to catch a fish and to place him in her net. And where is the fish not wished by Belladonna as yet? She will woo or grab or snatch you. When her fish is hooked and safely cooked, she goes gaily on her way to see the tomato's dish is fished out of Napoli Bay. When her fish is hooked and safely cooked, she goes gaily on her way to see the tomato's dish is fished out of Napoli Bay. Belladonna, I go to Parker. Belladonna, Napoli. When I spend a lira or two upon her, then she's friendly, friendly as she can be. Belladonna, do me the honor. Belladonna, that is my plea. And I know that should as fate, she'll pick me out as her mate. So congratulate Belladonna and me. Belladonna. Translation? Fair lady, but it also means deadly nightshade, a poison. Did you see her again, Grandfather? Mm-hmm. Every day, twice a day. Well, didn't your congregation object? I didn't know it then, but the head boardman of my church went to see Margarita Cavallini. Madam Cavallini, I beg you, cut short your concert engagement. Leave New York. I cannot. Reverend Armstrong has a great career ahead of him. You must not ruin it merely because you wish to be amused for a few days. Amused? Perhaps I felt that way six weeks ago. But now, I'm in love with him. I am sorry. If only I had never met true love If only I had known in advance All the tears, all the fears that pursue love Whose heart aches through love When it's more than a chance If only I continue to treat love as something to accept or decline, but my heart is filled with sweet love. I must face. Madam Cavallini, I understand, but for his sake, will you say goodbye to him and not see him anymore? Yes, yes, of course. Will you give him these violets, please? Tell him that he was wrong and I was right. The violets are dead.
Rita, they told me you were leaving. Yes, Tom. Then I'm going with you. Because I'm in love with you. You said the words. Of course I did. I'm in love with romance. You're in love with romance. Our eyes can tell at a glance. You and I have found heaven. Lips meet, hearts are as low. Sweetheart, I only know I love you so We will be always in love with romance I'm in love with romance You're in love with romance me, Margarita Mia? Oh, yes. Oh, my darling, my darling. Forgive me for coming to see you, Madame Cavallini. I know how busy you are on your last day in New York. You said it was urgent, Miss Susan. I know you and Tom are going to be married, that you're going away together. But I want to ask a favor. Yes? That you let him continue his work wherever you are. There are so few men in this world like Tom who, who know how to minister to the poor and to the sick in heart. You are so much in love with him, Miss Susan. So much that I want him to be happy. You see, his work is very important to him, too. His work. I... I promise I will do what you ask, Miss Susan. Thank you. I shall pray for your happiness and Tom's. Pray. Thank you. Goodbye, Madame Cavallini. Give me strength. Dear God, give me the words to say to you. Rita, what's happened? Nothing. I thought you realized. It was a lark, an amusement <laughs> to pass the time. An amusement? Certainly. A new young man in every city. Very good for publicity, for glamour, and to pass the time of day. But don't you love me, Rita? No. Now, please go. My apologies, Madame Cavallini. I wish you a bon voyage. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Tom, thank you for having loved me. That's how I remember her, standing with her eyes closed. A few months later, I married your grandmother. Do you know, my boy, it was Susan who taught me what a truly wonderful and wise woman Rita Cavallini was. Where is she now? I don't know. Uh, the south of France, I think. Cavallini, the, the opera star. Hey, I think I read something in tonight's paper about her. Oh, did you? It's right here in my, my pocket. Let me see. Here it is. Nice, December 30th. Madame Margarita Cavallini, one of the great opera stars of our time died this morning at her villa at Mifleur. Is that all it says? Well, there's a whole column of biography further down. She was born in Venice in... Don't... Don't tell me the date. All right. Debut in Milan, 1889. Sang prima donna roles in Paris under direction of Puccini. Success in London. Brought to this country in 1897. No, no. Well, it was 1898. There's 
One last line, grandfather. Madame Cavallini never married. Good night, grandfather, and thank you. Oh, oh, where are you going, Harry? To marry my girl. You see, grandfather, I knew you'd say yes. Did I say yes? Oh, I guess I did. Thank you, grandfather, and sweet dreams. Sweet dreams. Very sweet dreams. Case will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Barbara Logan, who was Susan, Peter Rankin, Herb Butterfield, and our entire company. Sigmund Romberg's My Romance was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. And the Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? The contribution you make to the March of Dimes is fighting money. Money that is used to fight infantile paralysis, the worst crippler of children today. First, your money goes to help care for the victims of polio with iron lungs, braces, crutches, and wheelchairs. And it also goes for basic research to help medical science in its search for a polio vaccine. So be sure to join the March of Dimes right away and help fight back at the dreaded crippler of children. Thank you, Marvin. And now here again is our charming guest, Miss Evelyn Case. Thank you, Gordon. It was a joy playing in this famous love story with you. Well, you're a wonderful Cavallini, Evelyn. If I could have done it all over again, I would have run off with you. <laughs> you mustn't double-cross the author. What's on the show train next week, Gordon? Well, you listen. Oh, that's a wonderful war. Two hearts in three-quarter time. That's our delight for musical for next week, and the star of Broadway's Brigadoon, Miss Marion Bell, will be here to waltz it with us. We'll all be listening. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Evelyn. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out and so on for next Monday night. In two hearts and three-quarter time, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Romance was presented by special arrangement with Century Library Incorporated of New York. Gordon McRae can soon be seen starring in the Technicolor musical The Desert Song. Our choir was under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music was prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Until next week, this is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Tonight, the voice of Firestone features Risa Stevens on NBC.